thank you, she says simply, I will tell him. All the nation wants to tell him, but when he comes back, his first thought is to thank others. I want to thank the British people for what they have done. Next, and next I want to say that the settlement of the Czechoslovakian problem, which has now been achieved, is, in my view, only the prelude to a larger settlement in which all Europe may find peace. This morning, I had another talk with the German Chancellor, Herr Hitler. And here is the paper which bears his name upon it as well as mine. Some of you perhaps have already heard what it contains, but I would just like to read it to you. We, the German Führer and Chancellor, and the British Prime Minister have had a further meeting today and are agreed in recognizing that the question of Anglo-German relations is of the first importance for the two countries and for Europe. We regard the agreement signed last night and the Anglo-German naval agreement as symbolic of the desire of our two people never to go to war with one another again. <laughs> We are resolved that the method of consultation yeah, yeah. shall be the method adopted yeah, yeah. to deal with any other question that may concern our two countries, and we are determined <coughs> to continue our efforts to remove possible sources of difference and thus to contribute to assure the peace of Europe. To the Prime Minister, the agreement of Munich is only a beginning, but the nation thinks it a sufficient achievement for the moment. All the way to Buckingham Palace, the crowds have lined the route, and around the Victoria Memorial, the press of humanity in the rain is reminiscent of jubilee or coronation. As the King and Queen and Mr. and Mrs. Chamberlain come out on the balcony, the cheering rises to a climax. So let us close on this scene of enthusiasm. The Prime Minister, by his King's desire, acknowledging his popularity from the balcony of Buckingham Palace. Our words of admiration and thanks are exhausted for the man who averted another Armageddon.